children, and welcome to our weekly look at your favorite fairy tales as they were originally intended to be heard by their creators. Today, we'll take a look at the magical fair maiden we know as Cinderella, as told by the bloodthirsty duo known as the Brothers Grimm. Once upon a fucked up time in a land far, far away, there lived a tragically grief-stricken but beautiful young woman named Cinderella. You see, Cinderella was sad because her mother had just died and to make matters worse, her father quickly remarried one of the town's biggest sea bombs, who in turn then brought her two basic ass daughters to live with her. So, it doesn't take long before Cinderella's new stepsisters who, from this point on, we'll refer to as Fugly One and Fugly Two, decided to make her their own personal indentured servant. One day, the family received a royal invitation from the king, inviting the ladies of the town to attend a festival and meet the prince. Mm. Of course, the Fuglies were more than excited and immediately tried to look as close to decent as they could for the big party. Cinderella, on the other hand, was told that she could only go if she collected an entire bowl of lentils from the garden. Really? <laughs> the stepmother knew she wouldn't be able to do so on her own, so she left the stepdaughter alone in the garden. What she didn't suspect, however, was that in the Brothers Grimm version of this story, Cinderella has telepathic powers that allow her to talk to the birds. Cinderella used her telepathic powers and had her feathered friends help her collect all the lentils from the garden and into the bowl. Cinderella then quickly rushed back into the house with her bowl full of lentils and a heart full of hope, only to find that her stepmother had already left for the ball with her two daughters. Bitch. Completely devastated, Cinderella runs to a magical tree that has grown from her late mother's grave and says, Shake and quiver, little tree. Throw gold and silver down to me. Of which her magical dead tree mom says, Sure. And just like that, a couple of birds flew down from the tree carrying the most beautiful gold and silver dress, along with a pair of golden slippers, which she immediately put on and raced to the festival. Once at the party, it didn't take long for the prince to spot Cinderella from amongst the crowd and immediately ask her to dance. So, they danced and they fell in love. And then, for no good reason, because the midnight rule isn't a part of the Brothers Grimm version of this story, Cinderella just bounces, flees off into thin air, but leaves behind one of her golden slippers. On the following day, in one of the most baffling displays of judgment from a future king, the prince decides to have every woman in the town try on the golden slipper in an effort to find his future wife. And that's when, my children, the story starts reading like an unproduced sequel to Hostel 3. No one shall be my wife unless her foot fits this slipper, said the prince. I'll give it a try, said Fugly One. But when Fugly One's mother saw that her daughter couldn't fit into the shoe, she pulled out a knife from the kitchen and said, Cut off your toe. When you are queen, you will no longer have to go on foot. To which Fugly One responded, Sounds legit. The elder Fugly then proceeded to limp towards the prince with her blood-soaked golden shoe. Ta-da! It fits, you see. But the prince was not fooled, because even though he couldn't recognize the face of the woman he loved, he sure as hell could tell when a crazy ass bitch cut off her toe in order to fit into a shoe. Don't you have another doctor around here? That was Scottish. I'm gonna do that over. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have another doctor around here? Cinderella finally makes her dramatic entrance in full homeless maid attire. I am the other doctor of this house. Let me try on that slipper. And voila, a perfect fit. The prince suddenly recognizes Cinderella in what surely is the beginning of a troublesome relationship with a man who can't even recognize faces. The end. Just kidding. In the last attempt of bloody vengeance, Cinderella uses her bird powers and has her feathered friends pluck out the eyes of her already mutilated stepsisters. And then she rides off into the sunset with the prince of her dreams. The end. For reals. Thank you.